This goes by the uh, theorem Cauchy criteria for, so this is a theorem, let us write it as theorem Cauchy's criteria, f n converges to f uniformly if and only if f n is Cauchy. Cauchy in B X R. So, that is uh, okay. So, we have seen uh, uniform convergence, we have seen when a sequence does not converge uniformly, a criteria for that. We have seen now a criteria which says when does a sequence converge uniformly, right? namely it should be uh, uh, converging in the B x r and that is same as saying it should be Cauchy there. Okay? So, we know we can test uh, sequences uh, being converging uniformly or not. So, let us finally, look at uh, whether this serves our purpose of uh, saying that when point wise convergence limit was not continuous functions converging point wise the limit was not continuous, convergence uh, uniform differentiability did not imply the derivatives uh, converge okay. and uh, integral also we had an example that f n's are integrable converging point wise did not imply that <coughs> limit is integrable. Okay. And these are important things uh, as far as the convergence problems are concerned these are important problems in analysis because whenever you want to go beyond algebra, algebra is 1, 2 and 3, only finite number of operations. When you, you can look at only polynomials, right? to generate functions which are non-polynomial, non-rational functions, you have to go to analysis. Right? That is why we had to do all that exponential, logarithm, trigonometric, all those functions were cannot be obtained using algebra alone, you have to go to limits. Okay. So, uh, things that are preserved, so let us uh, write theorem 1, f n converges to f uniformly implies and each f n continuous at some point x naught implies f also continuous at the point x naught. So, let us write a proof that continuity is preserved in uniform convergence. So, let we want to uh, analyze so, for convergence what we have to analyze? f of x minus f of x naught, this difference, right? We want to show f is continuous, we have to make this thing small whenever x is close to x naught. So, f n converges to f uniformly, right? So, uh, uh, okay. so, let us I have to somehow bring in f n inside it, right? Because something is given about f n. So, let us bring in. So, this is f x minus f n of x plus I have subtracted. So, let me write f n of x minus f n of x naught plus f n of x naught minus f of x naught. I am adding and subtracting what I am f of x, I subtracted f n of x, I add f n and then I subtract f n at x naught, add f n at x naught and the final term is there it is as it is. 
So, I have added and subtracted use triangle inequality. Why I am doing that? I am forced because something is given to me about f n. To use that fact, I have to bring in f n, right? Then only you can use it. And now, if I look at this quantity, the first one is less than or equal to norm of f minus f n, the first term, okay, this term. And this term, let us keep it as it is, if you like. So, it is mod of f x, f n x minus f n at x naught plus, and this quantity again at the same point. So, if less than or equal to f n minus f norm infinity. Okay. And now I know that this quantity is small because f n is converging uniformly to f. Both these quantities are small, right? this and this. And what is this quantity, middle one? That is f n of x minus f n at x naught, same function at the point x naught, but f n is given to be continuous. f n is given to be continuous. So, this quantity is also small. right? So, we can just simply write so, using the fact that each f n is continuous, using the fact that each f n is continuous and f n minus f goes to 0. So, this equation star implies f is continuous. Is that okay? I am not writing that epsilon uh, every time kind of a thing. So, if you like want to write all that thing, you can write given epsilon bigger than 0, okay, I can find some stage n. So, that this quantity is small, this quantity is small less than epsilon and by continuity for f n after that stage for that stage right uh, this will be less than uh, epsilon okay by continuity so i can find a delta such so that you want me to write everything okay let me write so that you feel happy so what does this mean so so here is what i am saying let epsilon greater than 0 be given so, this is how formal proof will be written. Choose n naught such that mod of uh, f minus f n is less than epsilon for every n bigger than n naught. That is by using the fact that f n is converging to f uniformly. Also, for so let us take this f n, n bigger than n naught, let us take n naught itself, f n naught being continuous there exists a delta bigger than 0 such that mod x minus x naught less than delta implies f n naught x minus uh, f n naught of x naught is less than epsilon. So, this is 1, this is 2, then for in this equation star then in star put these values. So, this is less than epsilon, this is less than epsilon, this is less than epsilon and this is less than epsilon when x is close to x naught by delta. So, you get so in star um, x minus x naught less than delta implies uh, f x minus f x naught will be less than 3 epsilon does not matter. right? If you want it very nice, you could have cut down everything. In, okay? So, that is the idea of the proof. So, you should understand what you are doing, saying this thing I can manage, I can make it small by using the fact that f n converges to f uniformly. I can make this thing small using the fact that f n is continuous at the point x naught. 
and I can make this small again by uniform continuity. So, the middle term is small whenever x is close to x naught by continuity this will be small. So, that is what we have written given epsilon there is a delta and so on. So, that uh, proves the thing. Okay. All right. So, this is uh, that means, uh, continuity is preserved in uniform convergence. Okay. So, let us uh, prove that. Uh, so, theorem 2 says if f n belonging to B x r are Riemann integrable, and f n converges to f uniformly, then f uh, okay, uh, I should you know, Riemann integration. So, I should not write x now, because Riemann integration is only for some intervals. So, let we are taking x is equal to the interval a b integrability of functions is defined Riemann integral only for closed bounded intervals. right? So, here x is taken as, so we are looking at all bounded functions on a b to r, which are Riemann integrable and f n converges to f uniformly, f is a function on a b to r, then is also Riemann integrable and integral of f n a to b d x converges to integral f d x a to b. So, one has to put uh, a slightly stronger condition point wise we saw that even the function may not be integrable at all limit may not be integrable. right? In fact, you can give examples of functions where uh, f n are Riemann integrable, f n converge point wise right? and the derivative function is integrable, but the integrals do not converge. So, many such examples are possible, we are not going into all those things. What we are saying is uniform convergence at least is a one criteria, which allows you to pass on under limits integrability is preserved. Okay. I think we will prove it uh, next time, because the proof requires a bit of more partitions and so on. And we will also analyze what happens to differentiability, we will show that differentiability also is not preserved under point wise convergence. And in fact, one has to put very strong conditions uh, for differentiability also, even for uniform convergence. So, these are uh, slightly uh, deeper theorems. And this, uh, this thing that uh, when does integral of f n converge to integral of f for Riemann integrable functions, uh, as I had mentioned is the beginning of the story of Lebesgue integration. In general, it does not happen, it happens for uniform convergence. Okay. What other class can happen that is, so we will stop here.